And just to give a little bit of background where my work um, kind of generated from, I think it came from the idea of protesting. So I use poetry to protest. Um, and so I was like a 15 year old girl on the megaphones on every protest, every rally. And I realized it was kind of like uninviting. Um, and I found it like it was uninvited. So, so when I joined the art scene, um, I kind of um, understood the power of art and what it can do to amplify, amplify and encourage and inspire people in kind of like war-torn countries. And, and when the war began in Yemen, being from Yemen, and I'd spoken about other bigger major issues around the world, I, I was kind of mute for like six or seven months. And I realized it was because I hadn't identified myself as Yemeni and watching from my British window when I witnessed my British government and arming and supplying Saudi Arabia, which is then landing uninvited in my home. It was kind of like a responsibility. Um, and I had to kind of like catch up really, really quickly as a young person, understand the language, understand the politics around it. And yeah, so I navigated this through my poetry to protest. Um, so the first piece is called The Wedding. And this is about what an English newsreader would tell me about my home, but it wouldn't match with my mother's memories. An English newsreader told me home was a lost young man holding his AK-47 with no shoes. A story that did not tally with my mother's childhood memories dancing to step melody around the yard to the music her tongue crafts. She flutters her Turkish silk headscarf across her shoulders. Veiled women watch from the balcony and the village men gather, honking their Toyota Jeeps, firing their gunshots to the two step melody across the yard. My father wears a white silk robe and a red and white shawl, swinging his jambia to the committed clapping. And grandma's blissful tears promise mother that this is a blessing from God. So this is the piece that I wrote probably during when the war began. And it was kind of like I was reattaching myself to my identity and these memories. Um, and obviously we're now in the sixth year and I find myself um, kind of understanding what the war means to me as a Yemeni British activist. So I feel like a hypocrite. Um, I feel like we're not doing enough. Um, I feel frustrated, I feel angry. Um, so I wrote uh, a piece for, um, about victory and it was commissioned, I remember they asked me, what does victory mean to me? And I said, it does not belong to people like us. And um, so this is called, victory does not belong to me. I married the world to understand it. But the earth is too dry, perished in complete darkness to paint blue skies. Because when was the last time I looked up? An awaiting storm to wash away the streets of wasted blood. In the rain we keep on dancing to find that victory is far from ours. And I hid under classroom desks, meddling my fingers in someone else's story, guarded by warlocks. To blindly see what was beneath paper made of ashes and the terror that lives in our children. Because between the bullet and the trigger is always God's given right to live. And I hid under classroom desks, learning of the great wars and my own ink of my forefathers we yet to name, bleeding to death inside of me and a gravestone found in heaven. Yesterday's history is a calamity in a world of a thousand mothers and an orphan child lost on the street, searching for a frightful home. Our secret between borders, because between the oppressor and the man-made missiles is God's given right to live. And I hid under classroom desks, skipping pages as my eyes grew confused of black and white moving pictures and we part ways, waving our greetings and farewells. There's another suicide in our trenches, 
is a child cradling war in its first steps in the rubbles of destruction and when death is part of their national anthem then what is victory drowning in army coats standing in line bigger than their feet swinging ak-47s around their necks digging holes in their back gardens with their names engraved in headstones what is victory because between the missile and the target is always god's given right to live and we mourn dressed in black, scatter our flowers, fill our fields in colours and stand in stillness while those who plant bombs in people's homes for the fuse to light up, cradling war in our arms is not our victory. And waiting for the victors to write history is not our victory. And guarded by the oppressed is not our victory. And victory is far from ours. And it does not belong to me. Thank you. Um, so um so this poem obviously took me to a point where i had to ground myself and remind myself that there will there will be many things that we will have to continue fighting and we will have to continue this fight and my poem can only speak to so many people and it can only speak to myself first um but i realized going to rallies, protests, going to parliament, seeing politicians speak. Um, I remember I was in an event and there was a politician who said 100,000 children are dead, women and children and men. And I said, it's so easy for, for us to throw statistics around the room. Um, but if you tell me 200,000 people are dead tomorrow, that only becomes one to two. because the imagination of a human being can't imagine 100,000 people dead. So I feel like through creativity and through art, and this is why I, I'm in this industry because I find myself in a way that I'm networking with Yemeni artists in Yemen and around the globe. And, the, and that one of the best ways to kind of really understand what's going on in Yemen is to really connect with these artists who are really protesting through their art. And I'm just one voice living in Britain, looking through my British window, which is so hypocritical. Um, so I'm going to end with a piece which I wrote when I was really, really young, and it was a love letter to my home. Um, and it's called What Do I Know? Which a lot of Arab young, the young generation will say the same thing. They don't know of home, all they know is the Arab Spring. All they know is war, all they know is terror. And all they know is that their government is the one that is fueling and supplying. So um, this is called, um, what do I know? I love you, I love you, and I love those who love you. And even if they stitch my lips, I will rip them apart only to repeat your name. I love you, I love you, and I love those who love you. And I yearn for the day I see you stand on your feet in faith I hold close to my heart. I believe you will. But what do I know? What do I know, O oh people of Yemen? You see, the truth is within my genes. And I belong under the shades of the trees as the sun tries to control all of me. But what do I know? I traveled miles away at the age of four to a land I called home, but my heart never approved because something was missing. And upon my eyes, I sit to both to unfold the truth, this inner beauty. But so gracefully you sit, you waved hello. You waved hello, but I never had the time to say goodbye. Will you still be a fine in the style of your own and you walked along simply the life one designed and polished with original history lessons that was taught to mankind? But so charming you fall and you attract the eyes of those who don't know. And as I gazed alongside to the birds that chant early morning, rise, rise people of Yemen, because your morning shift has begun. And I love you and I love you and I love those who love you. And I remember, I remember the warmth of the sun upon my skin and that rain that painted villages wet all over the ground streaming down as they followed each other patterned beautifully because they were designed to obey, to respect the system of wonders and worship and devotion. And a miracle upon the heaving sea and that night time, that night time, a wink of sleep dreamt a lifetime of unfolding dreams and that star. I remember that star that lit out China more. Oh, people of Yemen, what do I know? 
because there's a tide flow upon my bloodstream that mixes between every tear drowned and every poverty forgotten. In the dry mouths that never complained of its sorrows and its tomorrows because the world has forgotten. But what do I know? What do I know, O oh people of Yemen? You see, because I love you. I love you, I love you, and I love those who love you. And even if they stitch my lips, I will rip them apart only to repeat your name. And I yearn for the day I see you stand on your feet in faith. I hold close to my heart. I believe you will, for I am your complexion. And I am the dryness to your nose, and I am the shine to your forehead, and I am the daughter of an Arab. But I am the wanderer in my own skin, yearning to return home. Um, thank you so much, guys. And I hope, you know, for all the work that you do, it's because out of love, it's out of protection, and it's out of we're protesting for what is right and for justice. Thank you. Thank you.